Take heed that you are not led astray, for many will come in my name, saying, I am he, and the time is at hand. Do not go after them, and when you hear of wars and tumults, do not be terrified, for this must first take place, but the end will not be at once. And there will be so signs in the sun, and the moon and the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations, and perplexity at the roaring of the sea and the waves, men fainting with fear and with foreboding of what is coming on the world. For the power of the heavens will be shaken, and there will be, and, and then they will see the Son of Man coming in a cloud with power and great glory. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But take heed to yourselves, lest your hearts be weighed down with dissipation and drunkenness and the cares of this life, and that the day will they come upon you suddenly like a snare, for it will come upon all who dwell upon the face of the whole earth. But watch at all times, praying that you may have strength to escape all things that will take place and to stand before the Son of Man. Glory to you, O Lord. Glory to you. The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High, and the power Glory to Jesus Christ. Glory to Christ. Good morning. Good morning. I think there's something that every one of us has done at least once in our life. Set our clocks in the evening before at a certain time to wake up on time the next morning. I think it's safe to say... All of, us, all of us have done that at least one time, correct? And what does that mean? What is that, that why do we set a clock to wake up in the morning? There's no guarantee. There's no guarantee that we're going to wake up. There's no guarantee that there's going to be another morning for us to have, to listen to that alarm for us to wake. But we set that alarm because we have one thing, hope. We hope. We hope that there's a morning to be there. We hope that we're going to wake up. We hope that there's going to be another day for us to have another opportunity for us to live out our lives and hopefully have enough time before the Lord comes. Today, we celebrate the first of the Saturday of Souls. Why do we celebrate this day? A lot of times, people of our Protestant brothers and sisters, even the people sometimes that have converted to the faith, they have a little bit of a challenging time understanding why we pray a requiem for the people that have passed. And why we pray for them for mercy. Why? Hope. It's hope. Every single thing that we do, every time we come to liturgy, Every time we have a baptism, every time we have a marriage, every time we do confession, every time we receive communion, it's hope. It's always the same answer, hope. Today we hear the epistle reading, right? St. Paul says, fear not and hope, right? You've got to have hope in order to live in this world. And Jesus, in today's epistle reading, gives us a very, very dark image of things to come, right? At the beginning, he tells us of all the things that are going to happen, wars, rumors of wars, right? That's been happening, and it's happening. And it's happening over and over again. Look at what's happening in our society. Look at what's happening in our world. The, the, the days will grow dark, right? Isaiah tells us that it's going to come a time where people will love evil for good and good for evil. Behold, that day is here. 
That day has been coming. It's been slow, but now it's blatant. Now it's out in the open. Now they're labeling what is good as evil. And now they're labeling what is evil as good. It is happening. It's been happening, but now we're blatantly seeing it, and evil is becoming more and more courageous as time runs on. But we who are Christians, we believe in Christ, we believe in the resurrection, we have that word. We have hope. We believe that we're going to be able to come to church and we're going to be able to worship and freely praise God. That's hope. But even if that's taken away, our hope cannot be taken away. Our hope is always going to remain as long as we have the authority in Christ, which is forever. We have it forever. When Jesus was living on this earth, when he was spending the time on this earth, he went around and he taught for three years. Only three years. He didn't live as a human being until he was 90. He didn't live until he was 120. He didn't live until he was 969 years old, like Methuselah. He lived for 33 years. All the time, most of us who live, right, we fight, we work, we go from day to day. And this last year, we have faced something that none of us have ever faced before. A pandemic. The coronavirus. And it's crippled people. It's crippled the world. It's crippled our Christians. It's crippled our hope. Why? I ask why. So you can live one more day? I often wonder, I often think about it when I see at the different times where I've done funerals in my life, I look at the person that's laying in the coffin and I found myself wanting to be in their position because they're there. They're there. They're where I want to be. That is why as Christians, as Orthodox Christians especially, we don't believe that people die. We don't believe in death. We say that our people have fallen asleep. We hear it today in the epistle reading. Two times, St. Paul writes to the Thessalonians, do not worry yourselves. They are only sleeping. And then when Jesus, right, remember the words that Jesus used. When he goes to the little girl, why are you weeping? Why are you sad? She's not dead. She's only asleep. Only asleep. But we, who are Christians, this year especially, we have been crippled by what has been happening in the world. We have been watching the news, watching Facebook, watching all the things that are happening in the world, and we are being concentrating and looking at all the things before us instead of looking up at the Lord. Every single time, every single time the early church would go to church, there was a chance, right? There was hope for them to be able to receive communion that day. But there was also a chance that the Romans would kick in the door, drag them away, and throw them into the den of lions. They would be persecuted. They would be crucified. They would have their heads taken off. They would be ran through by spears, shot by air, whatever means of execution that you can think of, the Romans tried to do to the Christians to get us away from having one thing. That's why they did all those things. To take away our hope. But how many times have you read in all our stories, every time you have read in every one of those places about the martyrs, about the people that have boldly gone to their death, to their falling asleep, because they had 
It's the same story. Every single time they would go into the catacombs to worship, into the homes to worship, there was always a chance they could die. What's the difference with today? You can catch the coronavirus. True. It's out there. I know it's out there. I've seen people dying. But that doesn't make any difference of why the churches are not packed. When 9-11 happened in 2001, right, there was one common denominator. The country was united. People were going into droves, into the churches with lit candles, and they were going into the churches, and they were praying that God would have mercy on our country because the country that was supposed to be unstoppable, undivided, the country that was supposed to be unstoppable had been attacked. And we had that hope. But something changed. Something shifted from that time to now. This coronavirus is only one of many things that Jesus has warned us about that's coming. It's not like he didn't tell us it was going to happen. Is it, a, is it terrifying? Maybe. It could be. It's terrifying to me only if I have no hope. If they come and take me away and kick in the doors of the church and drag me away and crucify me, it's only terrifying if I have no hope. But every single time I set my alarm in the morning and I hope for the next morning, especially the days when I come to celebrate the Eucharist, the day that I celebrate the resurrection, the day that I get to come and be who I was called to be, I come here with hope. Remember that word. Don't forget that word. We who are Orthodox Christians have been crippled by what has happened this last year because we have forgotten with the early church what our forefathers have gone through just to allow us to be able to sit in these chairs. The blood, the tears, the sweat, the pain, the suffering. It was all there just so we could come here to worship God. Who are we to be afraid? Who are we to cast away hope? We who call ourselves Christians should be ashamed of how we have acted this last year. But I have hope. I have hope because the power of the resurrection, the power of the Holy Spirit, the power of God within me is more powerful than anything else that this world can bring to me. So when I see wars and rumors of wars, when I see earthquakes in divers places, when I see famines going on, when I see pestilences going on, when I see terror attacks, when I see 9-11s, when I see all these things happening, I know in the end, when I take my last breath, that there's hope. That's what every Orthodox Christian has forgotten. We are supposed to have death on the forefront of our mind. Every single one of the saints has given us the same example. It started with 12 people. All but one of them met Christ in the clouds. I don't even know what God's going to do with Jesus. It's up to him. St. John got to die at a old age, but all the rest of them they all met their martyr's death doing what they were called to do, every one of them. Every one of them kept preaching the cross of Christ until they drew their last breath. And now we celebrate them on the Saturdays of Souls. 
And we pray that they will hear our prayers of intercession, that they will take our prayers of intercession, that they will go to the ear of the Lord, and that we will have just a little bit more mercy, a little bit more grace, a little bit more time, and a whole lot more hope. Let us glorify and praise the name of the Lord today. Let us worship him and remember why we are called Orthodox Christians. Because we have hope. Let us glorify and praise the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen.